God bless everybody today. Thank you, sir. You all, family, that you would stand for me is such a tremendous honor. I'm, I'm humbled. Please be seated. You all are uh, so precious. Pastor, God bless you. Let me first say I honor the Lord today, and I'm glad to be saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I know that's a little old school. But that's what it's about. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful because, first of all, let me honor the Lord for the prelate of California Western Jurisdiction. Wave your hand. Uh, Bishop Leo and First Lady Smith, would you all wait, give God some praise for them? He wanted to sit with his new bride. And I understand that. Glory to God, I've been married to my lovely wife. She's back there for more than 45 years. And uh, I'm so grateful for her. God bless you. Solid Rock, you all here somewhere from the Valley and Newark. Wherever you are, stand uh, if you attended Solid Rock in any kind of way. Glory to God. Some of you all are here. We're here to support, amen. This is, I, I want to be real clear. Uh, this is the first gathering that I've attended in about three months. And I had to talk to the Lord. Somebody say, I thought you said you had the Holy Ghost and God hadn't given you the spirit of fear. But I want you to know wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And all of that getting, get an understanding. That's why I want to encourage, I'm going to preach in a minute. I got I to gotta work. But I'm not going to preach long because we've had a long service. Uh, so lately we've been doing our services on uh, YouTube Live and Facebook Live. So I've learned how to preach short. <laughs> Took me a while, but I'm getting it. Glory to God. I honor the Lord. Amen. For all of these men of God, God bless uh, Superintendent Jones and Pastor, amen, Bennett, and Administrative Assistant Riley, my brother and my friend. Glory to God. To Elder Moore, Elder Larry Moore, Elder Tyron McGee, and uh, my deacon back there, amen, uh, Deacon uh, uh, Burnett. I saw another deacon back there, Deacon Hooker. Listen, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. Family, I want y'all to know y'all my family. Marcella is the godmother of one of my nieces, uh, and that goes way back. Well, let me just tell you, in 1978, uh, she was talking about how uh, I see my sister back there. God bless you, Mr. Hooker. But I, um, I had gotten out of the Air Force, and by the time I got out, I was a serious lush. I drank for real, for real, but I was a working alcoholic, you know. I always had a good job, always, you know, made reasonable money, and I paid my bills. Glory to God. But after I gave my wife the money, the rest of it, glory to God. But I, my brothers and my sister-in-law went to uh, Pastor Campbell and Mother Campbell's church, and... Uh, I guess I'd been out, I hadn't been out of the military very long. And I, I went by there, and that's where I first received the Lord. Now, I was raised in the church. My daddy was a superintendent. I was raised in the church. That's why it's so hard for preacher's kids. But I was raised in the church and saw all of the stuff. You know, sometimes the kids see more than the adults. And so I, was, I saw all of the stuff. Of course, that's just an excuse. I just wanted to chase the girls and cut up. But I finally decided to give my heart to the Lord in 1978. I did that. Got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost there at Menlo Park, Church of God in Christ. Yeah. 
I went back out in the world for a little while because I had some more uh, experimentation to do in order to get my doctor's degree in Synology. I know theologically that's not the right word, but I knew you'd understand that. Came back to the Lord in 1986, and I've been running for Jesus ever since. I want to I want to share that with you all because many times when we're going through what we're going through, we think we can never get out of it. I tried for 10 years to stop using drugs and drinking alcohol, S several drunk drivings. For about four years, I didn't have a driver's license. The city bus, season, the bus system was my limousine service. But in May the 6th, 1984, was my first day of sobriety to this day. So I've got about 36 years clean and sober. 36 years. Now, I'm saying that because I know I'm not the only one in this room that has had problems or is having problems with drugs and alcohol. I know I'm not. I didn't think I would ever be delivered from that thing. Would you look at somebody and tell them, but God? I hope I uh, didn't offend nobody too badly. I did want to offend you a little bit. Those of you who are offended, I did want to offend you a little bit. Not too bad. I want to say that Novia was my friend. I called her Novi too. I didn't know y'all did. I thought I made it up. <laughs> but she would follow. I would. God bless you, District Missionary Billings. I would. I would go to preach, and my wife would tell you that she, glory to God, would follow me. That she, she'd be there when I was preaching. She'd just show up, you know. We had that kind of relationship, and so when I decided, I would. Uh, the Lord put on my heart to. Uh, start another location for our church here in Tracy. Amen. She was one of those that was there early, and she stayed there. And I'm so grateful to the Lord for her. She was very faithful, uh, so very faithful. So let me, let me just read this portion of Scripture. Let me get to this thing, read this portion of Scripture. I'm not going to read it all. It's just a, a bit, and I just want to touch on this a little bit if it's all right. You all have talked about Novi. You know everybody knows that you preach your own eulogy in your life. Can't nobody put you in heaven. Ain't nobody can preach good enough to put you in heaven. Nobody can preach bad enough to send you to hell. You preach your eulogy in your life. Acts chapter 9, verse number 36, says that Joppa there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated, translated Dorcas, or dear. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. This woman, I want to tell you today, I want to talk about a woman with a benevolent heart. A benevolent heart. Everybody talked about the fact that Novia cared for other people. She, she, she reached out to touch other people. So much so that, I'm sorry for you, sis, but for other folks, she would fight for you. She would just, you didn't need nobody to fight for you. You fought your own. But she would fight for you. She cared for folks. And I thought about benevolent, kind-hearted, and warm-hearted, and tender-hearted, and big-hearted, good-natured, and gracious, tolerant, and compassionate, caring, and sympathetic. 
considerate and thoughtful, well-meaning and charitable, altruistic and generous. And not only that, she was magnanimous. I left that last word for y'all to go check out what it means. <laughs> that was Novia, a woman with a benevolent heart. There was within this woman of God, this disciple of the Lord, this committed servant of the people, God had placed the gift of helps. The Lord knew that before the foundation of the world that he could trust Anovia, I mean Dorcas, so that he gave her this very special and necessary gift to help all of his family. The Bible says that she was full of good works, this Anovia, I mean Dorcas, had a heart for the people. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows and springs the issues of life. David wrote in Psalm 51, he said, Create in me, O God, a clean heart, and renew the right spirit within me. And God did that for a novia, because even though Mama could tell that she had been drinking, God knew that it wasn't going to last long. He had already created a clean heart. It just hadn't been manifested in the earth yet. But she had a call on her life. And when the fullness of time had come in her due season, she did all she could to bless others. The heart. Benevolent. The heart. The heart, therefore, is your center. It's who you really are. You keep telling me you didn't mean to do what you did the way you did it, but you keep on doing it. I hear what you're saying, but your heart is telling me something else. You keep talking about me on Facebook and talking about you didn't mean it quite that way, but you said it the same way, just different words last week. Your heart. Because out of the heart flow the issues of life. As a man thinketh in his heart, somebody read the scripture, so is he. But when you have a benevolent heart, and matter of fact, some folk talk, you ever ran into somebody who talked real bad? They wouldn't take nothing from nobody. Huh? Yeah, they better not mess with me. I know what they did to you, but they better not mess with me. I'm not the one, but when they do mess with you, you ain't got no heart. So y'all didn't understand that. You do a lot of talking, but... Wasn't always saved, I'm just saying. Some folks talk about how much they love God, but God can't count on them when it's time to shine. But is your heart really turned towards God? Scripture says that the woman was full of good works. Charitable deeds. And I want to add this part because it's important. It says, which she did. Which she did. It's important to get this because a whole lot of talk, folks talking about doing good, talking about blessing folks, talking about being a saint of the Most High God. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that's what the mighty burning fire got my all on the heaven. Uh, and enjoying the ride for all of that stuff. Oh, but when trouble comes, we see really your heart is not turned towards God. You love God so much so that at midnight anybody can call and come by and visit you. Glory to God. Your heart. Your heart ain't in it. You're talking one thing, but your heart ain't in it. You're talking about blessing folks in heaven, folks. But 
to you when your heart is really in it, it will show. God will allow you to be tested so you can be exposed. It might be difficult. It might be hard. It might stretch you. I know I'm stepping on some toes now. But it might stretch you. But when the darkness comes in your life and you stand for God, you need to recognize that light shines brightest where it's dark. When you're going through whatever you're going through, well, I just got saved last week. Don't worry about it. Because understand, in the dark times, a 25 watt bulb is more useful than a 100 watt bulb at noon. You live for God wherever you are, whatever you're going to do. Maybe you don't have it quite like Novi. Glory to God. Maybe you're not walking with the strength that Novi walked, but walk like God gave you to walk. Now, I do want to be honest that you can't make up your own law. You don't get to determine which part of the gospel you're going to serve and still serve the law. Cussing folks out on your way to church. Feel like Urkel right about now. Did I say that? <laughs> Talking about how much you love God, but you can't seem to find your way to His house on a regular basis. <laughs> Scripture said, "Go back to your notes, Reverend." Okay. The scripture says that the woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. When she knew someone was sick, she served them. When she felt the difficulty of glory to God of her own sickness, she still served others. When she had to struggle out of her comfort zone, she still served others. When she could no longer carry out what was in her heart, she enlisted others to do it. We were there. We began the ministry uh, there on Tracy Boulevard. And we began to give out groceries and to feed people and have bags of groceries. And Novia, glory to God, did all she could, even while she was sick, to be out there giving out groceries at the time when she needed to be rested. I got encouraged. Wave your hand, baby. Glory to God. I'm stretching now. I ain't scared. I got my heart. But Novia would be out there serving. And even when we didn't have all we needed here in this area, she would drive over to God to East Palo Alto and, and, and Hayward and get more groceries and things down to pass them out to people who need it. Because she had a benevolent heart. <laughs> she had a heart that was about sacrifice and serving. She had a heart that was about blessing folks and doing good to all. I want you to understand that God wants all of us to have a benevolent heart. God was working in her the will and the do of his good pleasure. He wasn't just talking through her, but he was walking through her. The Bible talks about in verse number 37, I didn't read that, y'all forgive me, so let me read it. It says, And when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. As much as we love Noah, we could not do for her what God can do for her. So God recognizing that the time of Noah here on the earth was coming to an end. God said, I, I got to take her to an upper room. But it's an upper room that people can't take her to. It's an upper room that the pallbearers of the earth cannot carry. It's an upper room that the deacons take greater into. The Bible says, let us know that we have the angels of the Lord that encamp about us. Yes. Yes. 
Thank you. 